Hi team, Danielle here. I'm going to show you the process of assigning a team in Filevine. So typically when you first create a project, the person who creates that project is automatically going to default to the primary and also be assigned to that case or that project. To update those settings, you're going to head over to the team section and you're going to head to the members tab. This is going to show you all the people who are in that project already with no roles assigned. So you can extend over here how many people show up on this list without having to hit the next page. You can then search over here for one of your team members. So for example, if I wanted to select myself, I would see myself here. It will show me the member, the current project access that they have, and a lot of these settings are um, created on the back end in a default manner, but can be updated here. So for example, Danielle, the member Danielle automatically has admin access on all new projects, but that is on an org level. And to kind of manage it individually by project, you would come to this section to do so. So it shows the member, it shows their project access. We have admin, collaborator, and guests. Admin has uh, no restrictions on the project whatsoever. The collaborator is able to do a majority of the um, functions on a case. They can edit, they can create documents, they can do pretty much everything. They just have a few limitations such as doing team assignments like we're doing now. Um, they can't delete certain items, so, but they can do the majority of a case, uh, majority of the functions on a case. And then a guest has very limited access. Typically staff members won't have guest access. That's usually for like a client or a third party, maybe of counsel, um, stuff like that. So if you want your team member to have all access, you would just select admin. And then we have assigned roles. These are roles that are built on the back end, but on this level, you're just gonna select the role that they will have in this project. So. If Danielle is gonna be the paralegal, I would just select that. And you can also select more than one. So perhaps she was also gonna be the litigation paralegal, we can select both of those. And you'll see here that it's gonna turn green. And what this means is that she is the first, she's in the first position of that role. There can be multiple people with the, a role. So Multiple people can be the paralegal on a case, but only one person can have that first position. And those in the first position will have uh, this green flag and it will light up as green. So for example, let's find Amy here. So let's also give her paralegal role. And you'll see here that it turns gray. And that's because she's not in the first position. Next to the assigned roles, we'll see subscribed. So subscribed is whether or not this member, this team member is gonna receive notifications on this project. If you're subscribed, you'll get all notifications on the project, deadline notifications, uh, events that are coming up, stuff like that. And then finally, you'll see their username here. So we can see here that Danielle is the paralegal and litigation paralegal, and then Amy is the paralegal. We also have to select a primary. Typically, it's gonna to default to whoever created that project. So you can see here, the primary is Vine Skills team. That's who we are. So it automatically defaulted to me, uh, to Vine Skills being the primary. You'll also see here that it added uh, paralegal, and we have two. You can tell here that there are two people in this position. If you click this down, it will tell you the people who are listed in this position. But because I am the primary or Danielle is the in the first position, it's gonna show her first. If I hit Amy in that list, it's gonna make her have the first position. If we go back over to the members tab here, you'll see now Amy's paralegal role is green, meaning again, she is in that first position. It's really important to put the people in the first position correctly because tasks that are assigned, whether by phase um, or by widget, 
will be assigned to specific roles. And anyone in that role will get the task assigned, any auto tasks, who's in the first position. So even though Amy and, and I, Amy and Danielle are both um, have this paralegal role, Amy is the one who's going to get tasked with it because she's in that first position. Also for the primary, if there are tasks that are, are assigned or built into the phases and widgets, but not assigned typically to a role, it's going to automatically default to that primary. Also see here on our roles section, our roles tab here, that I only updated the paralegal and the litigation paralegal roles. But before that, we had the primary, which we know automatically defaulted to Vine Skills team. There always has to be a primary on a case. And again, it will automatically default to whoever created that project. It can, however, be updated, and I'll show you that in a second. It also automatically had our accounting member and our invoice member. And the reason for that is there are roles that are built on the back end and even team members who can be automatically assigned to every case with a specific role without having to adjust the project or the team section when a project is created. So that's why we've had, we had invoice and accounting automatically default with Zach and Zoe, because those are org auto ads from, uh, that are built on the back end. To update the primer, you're going to go over to your members section again, select the role for the person who you want to be primary and just select it here. Now, again, it's going to show as gray because there's already someone in that in that first position. So I'm going to head over to the roles tab here. I'm just going to drop this down and I'm going to select Danielle and now she'll be in that first position as primary. In addition to making sure the roles are properly assigned, you do want to make sure that you are selecting the correct project access and you are also selecting whether or not they're going to be subscribed. Someone has to be subscribed to a project to receive those notifications. And typically, if someone is working on the project often, or um, maybe it moves from department to department, you want to make sure that at the right time, or maybe throughout the entire life of a case, that the people who need to receive those notifications are. So to make sure they do receive those notifications, you're just going to go ahead and toggle subscribed on. And again, if you wanted to change someone's project access to either collaborator or guests or admin, you would do so here. And that's how you assign your team in a project. Now that we've added the team on a file vine level, we also want to add it on a project level on the front end. So we're going to head over to case summary and this section may be a little bit different for depending on your firm, your company or your build. It may be a case details uh, section, but typically you're going to have a section that also has staff assignments or something of that nature, something where it lists the team on the case. And this is used a little bit differently than the team section here. It's used more for reporting purposes uh, to create documents. In here, you're going to be creating your contact card if one doesn't already exist. And the contact card can house more information than the team, uh, the team contacts, I guess, if you will, um, can house. So that's why we do recommend that you also have it in your project in such, on such a, a section like the case summary section. So to add your team here, you're going to just add the contact card that's appropriate. So for example, for paralegal, we can go ahead and add Danielle. Let's not do that one. Let's do the other one because we want to make sure we're selecting a card that has the appropriate data. So for your team contact card or your staff con contact card, you should have it defaulted to staff, which you should have uh, in your contact types. Here we have firm staff. 
And then you want to make sure you're including all the information on your contact card that relates to your position at your company or firm. So your firm's address, your phone number for the firm, or maybe if you have a direct dial at your, your company or firm, you want to make sure you're including that. You want to include your professional email as well, your job title, the company, all of this information can pull into documents and reports. So you want to make sure that it's completed thoroughly. Then you'll continue to add other team members that are handling the case at the moment. This may change. So if you have departments, maybe uh, you have a case that is handled by a certain team while it's in pre-litigation versus when it's in litigation versus when it's in trial. You want to make sure you're updating these staff assignments as the case moves from department to department. People tend to use this as opposed to the team section here um, to see who is handling a case, where do the phone calls go, stuff like that. So you want to make sure you are completing this information thoroughly. So I'm just going to enter some data here. So now that I have um, the staff assignment set, typically, again, I would make sure your contact cards for your staff are thoroughly completed. But you can go ahead and hit save. And you may or may not have in the vital section, depending on if your, um, again, your, your cases tend to move from department to department, it will show in the vital section if you have it configured that way to show like the, the people who are handling the case at that time. And that's how you set up a case to have the correct team in both the team section and in the project such as case summary. I hope you found this helpful.